Hello everyone and welcome back to Planet Zoo. In today's franchise mode episode we're going to be finishing some guest areas that are surrounding the wild Africa habitat. So we're just having a zoom around here to show you kind of the progress that we're kind of making. I'm going to be showing you that bridge build in a moment, uh, sometime later in the episode, but we've got a few areas here that we want to develop. So starting down here with this barrier that runs uh, parallel to the reptile center, we're going to get rid of this brick barrier and we're going to create our own custom barrier, meaning all of this is now going to be null barrier. And I'd quite like to continue that null barrier all the way around the entirety of this enclosure. So we're actually going to be starting by putting in our null barrier and then we're going to use plaster and wood logs to create our own custom barrier. Now, a couple of things, we do need to make sure that this has enough height to prevent the buffalo from jumping over it <laughs> but that's the only issue most of the other animals in here don't have much of a jumping reach on them but the buffalo do as i discovered in an earlier episode so we're finally getting rid of these ugly rocks that i put in that i just think have never sat right with the rest of the build and we're going to jump into a speed build now so we're using one by two meter no it's uh, i think it's four by one yeah it's four by one meter plaster and all we're going to do is put up some logs and then stack the plaster on top of another one put in a cross beam and this is our basic wall going all the way around this section of the habitat and then it's just going to be a case of duplicating that and moving it across it's pretty basic doesn't have much to stand out but what it actually gives us is a nice flat canvas that we can add extra pieces onto if we so desire so as I'm just doing here just to play around a little bit. We can also increase the height of the barrier uh, whenever we feel like it and get it nice and lined up and put into place. So we could extend the height on this and put like a couple of um, guest um, helping items and stuff like the education boards and things like that. Or we can make some animal advertisements that go on, put some simple signage on directing guests all the way around because obviously this now is a completely cut off viewing area nobody's going to be able to see inside the wild africa habitat from here it's all going to be enclosed and that's basically going to stop people traffic build up on this side of the habitat so people are going to be able to go to the reptile center and view the saltwater crocodiles on that side of it where the viewing area actually is for them so they can see them outside and then access the rest of the reptile center that way without causing a buildup of traffic where people are looking between two different habitats and causing a pile up basically so we're carrying this all the way to the cave system here and once that's done we'll move on to some further development around the cave system itself so what we're going to be doing here is we've taken two four meter log posts and we're just stacking them on top of each other and i'm trying to line up the wood grain so that it looks like one solid piece <coughs> I may have uh, lost my voice a little bit there. <laughs> so yes, uh, we're basically making some tall posts that we're going to turn into supporting beams for this cave structure because at the moment it's just this bare area and I wanted to give it some sort of feel to it to make it look like a proper cave that we'd actually worked on and built into and added these supporting struts to keep everything from falling on top of our guests basically and we are continuing this plaster theme all the way through and what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this and move it across and we're going to get that lined up and then use our plaster pieces as a guide of sorts so we're going to jump back into a speed build and I'm going to show you and explain to you what I mean so we're just running our posts along here and then we're grabbing some of our plaster pieces moving them in now i want these to be a bit longer so we're going to do two lots of uh four meters so another eight meter stretch going through and then that's basically the guide that we're going to be using so then we'll duplicate our post move it across and keep this going throughout the entirety of the cave system itself so like you're seeing here we're adding that post and the plaster duplicating that moving it across getting it into position so it matches a bit of a curve and i did start doing this where i'd put the posts in in opposite areas so that i could then continue to use them but it didn't really work so i ended up taking those out anyway we just carried this on all the way around kept moving things forward using this as our guide and once we get to the other side of the cave system we'll actually take those plaster pieces out because i'm not going to be using them as decoration for this part of the build this is all going to be kind of like a rock structure so we're going to pull some of the terrain further in to match it all up 
and to get it as close to those wood beams as possible. And then we're going to use stone and the stone cladding to kind of make it a finished piece so that it looks like this is a nice tight structure that's been carved through the rock and the supporting structures have, have been added in to like as the builders progressed and I just wanted to give it this nice feel and make it look good because it is a again it's another highlighted area of the build I'm probably going to be talking about this a lot where we've got areas where guests can stop to admire things it all boosts the scenery so if they're walking from A to B that's fine but if not it's nice to have these little moments where they can stop admire it and there's lots of nice decoration around them as well so I'm now filling in the structure itself and making it look like an actual supported area we're using mesh here on the top just to cover all of that up and then we'll probably put in some extra beams moving this one along here just to give it a little bit more of a supported feel and they're just going to go on the joins where the mesh is and then we're angling some more wood beams here and pulling them in to offer a little bit of bracing on that side there and it was a little bit difficult to get these lined up properly we did have a couple of instances where there was overlapping maybe i should have used some thinner wood beams for this this part of the build but i'm pretty happy with how it all turned out in the end and it was a little bit fiddly but the finished article i think is uh, really nice it, i'm really quite happy with how this one turned out and it was it's quite difficult because it was taking a little bit of time to kind of get my flow with this one and work out where i was going to put stuff and it did get a little bit frustrating and difficult uh, obviously because we were working with that long curve we had a lot of issues with things like the posts and stuff not quite lining up but here we are we've finished uh, i've jumped ahead so that we saved a little bit of time on the build and it's just this nice you can see all those supporting struts in place it looks good it looks like it's supposed to be we're going to jump back into a speed build now and i'm going to do a lot of rock work in quick time you may have noticed there's a fair bit of litter and somebody needs the toilet and we're going to address that in a later part of this build i'm going to talk about that another time so we are just grabbing a load of rocks here throwing them down and then we're going to move them into position later on just edging things around and making sure that we want to leave as many of the beams exposed as possible without making it look too obvious that it's been done that way so if if that makes any sense whatsoever i realized that was just a small ramble that i just didn't words came out of my mouth that probably didn't make sense what i want to make sure is it looks natural basically it looks like this rock face has been carved out and we have like drilled through chiseled right through the uh, the rock face itself to hollow out this area for guests um, and I think it's pretty effective but this was a lot of work it was quite tedious and it was quite dull and boring but I think it was completely necessary and hopefully you will agree now this looks weird I'm telling you now it looks weird but what I wanted to do is I wanted to use some of these faux rocks to create like geodes and stuff that had been in the rock face itself kind of like i don't know like iron ore or something that had kind of been unearthed while we were coming through and it didn't look amazing but i was pretty happy with like just the little bit of color that it added to what would otherwise be a pretty dull looking cave system which essentially could have just been uh, terrain painted basically i wanted to offer something a little bit more just to make it stand out a touch and I thought it was pretty effective and I did end up carrying it on and putting a few more of those in throughout the rest of the build. Now one thing I haven't done much work on is the actual ceiling itself. I thought I'd leave that bare. I could have put rock all the way across the ceiling but I thought that may have been a little bit of an overload. It may well be that I come back and add some reeds or something in that are like draped through. Maybe some roots. We could put some trees on the actual above section of this and then have their roots kind of poking through the bottom i think that would be quite a nice touch uh, but right now it's not important for me anyway at the moment it's not important <laughs> and it was just a case of getting these rocks in as we move around and making sure that there's some nice um, variation between them and it doesn't look too similar all the way through we did a little bit more terrain moving and things like that you can already see i've skipped the actual terraforming part of this because i pulled all of the terrain right up and close to the to the wood posts themselves and then these rocks are just kind of adding a little bit of a fascia to it just to finish it off as we moved around we kind of looked at areas where we could put in extra foliage and things like that and then when i was comfortable with like the fact that i had 
a nice little base we just duplicated a large section of it and moved that into position and then did a little bit of tidying up just to make sure it was all in place nice and neat and not looking too similar all the way around so developing really well we grabbed another section and then had a little bit of a camera whoops and another camera whoops <laughs> this happens quite a lot when i'm working underground uh, and when i'm working within buildings it can be an absolute nightmare <laughs> but working through it getting a little bit better with my camera controls and stuff and then it was just a case of repositioning some of these rocks that we'd copied in place and then adding a few more just to bulk it out almost at the end of this section as well and obviously the opposite section's already been done as part of the actual build itself so there's not much work to do on that one and it's a nice big mirrored area any uh, mirrored area windowed area so that's not actually a problem that we need to worry about at all because it's complete and that just about finishes this part of it off and we're just going to put in a little bit more foliage just to add some splashes of colour throughout the build. Another thing that we need to think about is how we're going to light this and I came up with some very interesting, shall we say, ideas <laughs> um, to make things stand out and make some nice custom light areas uh, that don't actually end up giving off a lot of light in the end but I was pretty happy with the outcome anyway and I'm sticking to it <laughs> I'm just being stubborn so some of these uh, ivy pieces we put down didn't want to make it too similar so we took a couple out and again we may come back and revisit that just to do a couple of finishing touches but I'm going to do that off cam what I'm planning on doing is a pretty big off camera session to uh, finish off some extra bits and pieces and the next time we come back I think we may be ready for a full tour um, I do have one area left that I would quite like to build well yeah one area left that I would quite like to build into before I actually move on with this zoo and you will have seen at the start when we did the sweep through we're, all, we're at that station now the second train station and I want to start building into that position now you're not going to see me do any of that in this episode because what I wanted to do was con concentrate on the I suppose it's the entrance side of the zoo to get that finished off and tidy up those guest areas so we're going to talk about the lightning fixture that I decided to do so I was playing around with some of the glass windows and stuff and I thought this would look really cool to just have this against the natural backdrop to have something kind of constructed and built in so I was playing around with a torch and some glass beams and stuff and just to see how it worked the torches themselves don't actually give off a lot of light but I then started playing around and seeing if we could put anything of interest in so it started with getting a little plaster block and dropping a torch into it and then using a sheet of glass to build up a kind of mock light itself so this would be against some of the rocks on the wall and I decided we'd start by making this out of plaster it didn't go too well I didn't really like the effect that it was creating and of course the torch itself and the fire coming off it has a pretty big area and it didn't look great all boxed in like that but further developments I have a second plan and we're gonna slow things down for you now and I'm gonna explain exactly what it was I did so we are here in live mode now <laughs> basically I replaced the plaster with rocks and I thought it would be a good idea to try and just create something that was half artificial it's essentially just rocks with a bit of glass in it really it's pretty basic but I thought it looked really cool and it was quite nice to create something that was artificial unfortunately the end effect isn't actually what I'd hoped for but I'm gonna stick with it because I think it still looks pretty decent and it's kind of I guess it's a little bit of a a practice for me for when I start thinking about what other things I can make that are lighting based and can create something a little bit more standout ish in the future so we were just positioning rocks so that they kind of had a limited footprint against the torch itself and still managed to create kind of a box for it I really loved the idea and it would have been nice if the plaster idea had worked a little bit better obviously I didn't want to use materials like wood and stuff because we're gonna imagine that this is real fire or something I guess but we also need to if we're gonna be going at it with that angle need to make sure that we're not boxing it in too much with rocks so we're speeding up again just to finish this off and I think it looks really cool it's uh, effective it's certainly kind of it gives the feel that I was looking for from it and of course because it's all rock and it's the same rock as we're using for the rest of the build it actually sits quite nicely so we've got this kind of like weird little egg shape that we've created at the end and we're just duplicating that moving it around and putting it in position 
obviously there are some overlaps and sometimes it doesn't look great against the rest of the terrain but it's not too much of an issue that it's, it's something that we need to uh, reconsider and redo so it was just a case of finding little pockets along the route where we could put this in and adjusting some of the areas around it so that the torch wasn't covered by other rocks and the lighting wouldn't be blocked by other things and I was pretty happy with that final outcome it looks okay it doesn't give off a great deal of light obviously I've not seen it in the dark yet so it may actually give off a bit more light than I hope for because we get a lot of natural light coming in through this cave anyway and I think it looks pretty good as it is so moving on and slowing things down once again we wanted to create a kind of little staff area here um, that is just on the exit of the cave so we can put like a staff room a workshop and a power generator in here because I'm conscious that on this side of the build there's no other power generators and it would be nice to have something that we can feed some power through just in case we want to put some more artificial lighting on that pathway going through and some general street lighting for this opened area for when it actually gets dark we're going to need a power source for that so i had a little bit of an issue with the pathing here and it uh, looks very apparent as you can see uh, there were certain things where it just didn't look right and we kept getting clipping coming through from the grass itself so it it was a bit of a nightmare but I have an idea of what I wanted to do so I thought I would make sure that I followed through with that and got everything lined up. So ignoring this pathing issue that I'm building around here, I basically wanted to make something that kind of jutted into the rock face again um, as if we'd erected these buildings into the side of the cliff and we can build up and make little kind of like a lean-to type thing using wood and corrugated iron and integrating some rocks into the side of it as well and i think that would look pretty cool and it also creates another little scene for the path going around and obviously gives our staff somewhere to go because one of the other things i'm noticing is um, my work areas are a little bit too big uh, especially in the wild africa habitat i've got a lot of uh, keepers who are just kind of going in and dumping food or they always fill enrichment items first uh, as I've learned through doing a little bit of research so I often get like feeders and stuff that are just left empty because they'll just feed the they'll, they'll put the feed in the enrichment items first and that'll be that um, if the feeder doesn't need topped up they'll just leave it and sometimes they'll fill up the enrichment items and then leave the feeders regardless they just sit empty so as long as the animals are getting fed it's not really a problem but i would prefer to see it all kind of fed and sometimes i see food just getting dumped on the floor when they go in mainly i'm guessing it's because they get there very late and then need a break so they'll dump the food and then go so a little bit disappointing anyway we put in a workshop a staff area and a generator and then just did a little bit more terraforming to bring that cliff edge out and integrate it in a little bit more then we took the arctic wood walls and started making a little bit of a scene here bringing it all the way around and integrating it in and then pulling terrain in to match it up which i think looks pretty cool i then went with the arctic roof rather than corrugated iron and i think that looks okay and uh quickly changed my mind though because i think the corrugated iron looks really nice it's got that like industrial feel to it um, so we built that in put that in place and again pulled in the terrain so here we've got that little weird overlap and we're just going to tidy that up as best we can and then put in some rocks to cover up the last bits of it a couple of things that we need to make sure of though are uh, we don't have anything poking into the rooms themselves because that wouldn't be a good look you can see on the inside of these buildings and i don't want a giant rock poking through the ceiling when my staff are in there trying to work <laughs> i also need to arrange stuff around the generator building itself because that's going to be an important one that we don't want to have a lot of clipping through given that it actually just juts out into the side of the, the cave and the terrain itself so we're going to build a wall on the inside of that which i probably should have done first and uh didn't so making life difficult for myself yet again but it was okay it was an easy fix and once we got it in place it was pretty fine just making sure that it was all flattened off and then putting a, a capped roof on the top of it we then put the eaves in which again nice and easy and just adds that extra finishing touch to the build looking good there's a little bit of overlap there on the side that I don't particularly like but it's not too much of an issue. We then put some signs in place and finished everything off. I just wanted to put, kind of like find a hazard sign but I couldn't, couldn't find one. 
and then we put a little bit of cladding on the side here just to tidy up that corner because it did look a little bit strange and I wasn't too keen on it so a little bit of rock cladding just to finish it all off and uh, pretty pretty happy but I then had an idea we put some mulch in my favorite some mulch and then we'll make some little garden trims for it just to really finish this one off so again we'll take our plaster drop that into position and it'll just frame everything really nice and make this tiered system that looks actually very deliberate and very constructed and well thought out rather than me just slapping stuff down and hoping that the terrain looks good on its own it's always nice to add in these little finishing touches just to finish off a build and make a little scene stand out and look good so here we'd probably put a few trees and stuff in and actually rather than putting rocks in like I'd originally planned to I just flattened the terrain out a touch more on that side and it worked pretty well and the whole idea with this was we've got this pretty uneven path that I didn't really like but there was not a lot I could do with it and I did try quite often and, and, and quite hard to get it working and it just did not work at all so disappointing but the overall like final piece here I think is really really nice just for like a tiny little extra bit of fluff to really finish off a build I thought it was uh, I was quite surprisingly impressed with how well it turned out again you can see us here trying to sort out the path issue and I eventually gave up to be honest uh, I, I could have done that path there that you saw but I didn't like that I wanted it to be kind of like a more gradual step up and I wasn't getting it and it was uh, quite disappointing but in the end we just went all the way back and left it as it was because that was the best I could come up with. <laughs> so the uh, final phase of this is basically going to be to put in some rocks and some plants and foliage which I'm going to slow us down for. The rock, pretty easy, you've seen me do a lot of rock work and we wanted to integrate it with the exit of the cave system as much as possible so this rock face continued all the way through into this build and it meant we could finally put in and match up as we were and I was really looking forward to getting that all finished off and making it look like one complete piece. So slowing us down again, we're putting in some banana palms. Again, a lot of these are going to be from the Africa biome, these planters and stuff. So we're putting in a few more palm trees and things like that. I just want to make sure that it's all kind of uniform and within keeping with the theme that we're going through for this entire build itself. So a lot of like different plants and stuff. We didn't want to use like too many different biome based stuff. So we put down a few like tree trunks and things. I just thought it would be quite nice. A couple of broken Himalayan pines and some bromeliad plants and things and then we threw down a load of reeds to uh, really finish off and add like a little bit of extra detail to this one. Uh, I tried faffing around with a couple of trees and it didn't really work and eventually just went for these common reed stands, put them down on the flat surface there then highlight the three of them, pull them into position and sink them right down into the earth so they're just kind of sticking out the top there and I just think that gives it a nice finishing touch. We then moved some of the moss from the inside of the cave around here and added that all up the sides moving a few more rocks into position just to finish everything off and a final palm tree sticking out of the side there jutting out of the rocks and it looks really nice and really well finished off we then went through putting a few lights just to have a little play around maybe doing something like this with the ones that we had in the uh, classical area earlier on at the main entrance but not really sure how it's going to pan out we'll have a little play around with things i then thought about using these as roots as uh, we'd had a little as I'd mentioned earlier in the episode, we were going to put some tree roots coming through and then it didn't look particularly natural so I just thought, well, we'll leave it. I then had a, a thought of it being like stalagmites or stalactites or something that would lit up and, and that didn't really come to fruition either and eventually we just kind of settled on something a little bit more like orthodox by using these African lights on the posts and just putting them all the way through, sinking them all in a touch and leaving them switched on just to add that tiny little bit of light into the habitat itself. I then wanted to put a few special effects in because we've got this power we might as well use it so we did a little bit of falling dust and stuff and uh, some dust blowing and things like that I just thought it looked uh, really quite nice we sunk that in to make sure it wasn't too much of an issue and like it was not going to be spraying dust in guests faces and stuff like that. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> we've come through this nice area I'm getting dust blown in my face, fantastic. And then it was just a case of building up a few more rocks just to add these finishing touches on and putting a few little leaves and stuff in. 
because we just wanted to make sure everything sat nicely and nothing looked out of place and a little bit awkward which can tend to happen if you neglect a certain few areas and here I didn't like this so I thought I'd cover it up with plaster right the way up to the roof bring out some more rocks and create a custom banner for two of the animals that we have in here. Now I know I have warthogs and I know I have African buffalo that come in here for rest and feeding so we used that and we put a few education boards on a nice big plaster backdrop and added in a few nice frames. It was a little bit tricky because we were a little bit short on space with this but I thought eh, let's give it a go anyway. So we used some of these exclamation marks, put them at some strange angles, and then light bulb as if, hey, here's some knowledge for you. You can have a light bulb moment over here and learn a little bit about the African buffalo. And these carpets fit perfectly to make a nice frame. And it was just a case of repositioning things and getting it nice and flush. So again, that is an example of how you can use more unorthodox sort of tools to create something a little bit more unique. And I've really quite liked it <laughs> and then we put in a few conservation boards here just to uh, finish off the end of it we went with a couple of nice little education spots uh, I may put another one in there we then solved our litter issue by putting a load more bins in place and finished off by moving the barrier further along so finally before we move on to our nice big um, bridge build I wanted to put in a toilet block and we're just gonna once again use the arctic wood and you will see very soon where I'm gonna be building this but it's basically on the corner as you come around yeah we, there we go past that new staff area that we've just built we're gonna have a toilet block because as I mentioned earlier in the episode somebody needed the toilet and there was no toilet nearby so we're gonna solve that issue right now by building something pretty basic once again we're using the arctic wood we're gonna make a little structure here and then we're gonna sink it again into the side of this mountain because this actually is a pretty important mountain pass it's where the train goes over back to the entrance of the entire zoo so I wanted to make it kind of like more of a featured area and we'll do some work at some point on the top of the structure that's kind of looks a little bit like there's a staff gantry or something so that staff can gain access to it to do repairs or whatever or work on the track and we'll make it look a little bit like a railway that's working with little bits of like logs or sleepers and stuff nearby but that is for another time we've put our toilets in place we're just repositioning it so that's right on the corner and then we're going to pull this area all the way back out so that it's formed part of a cliff side and we'll pull it right up and over as over as we can <laughs> not too much though <laughs> and then we'll put a roof in place again using the corrugated iron to form up a kind of building shape we'll then pull the terrain over again and then flatten it out to create a hollowed out structure that we can work on the interior of and we're going to use some nice breeze block flooring just flatten out the terrain but we had a little bit of trouble again mainly because the toilet blocks were in, in situ so we couldn't actually flatten the terrain around it and that was pretty simple to overcome by putting the toilet block getting rid of the toilet blocks basically flattening the terrain out smoothing it down and then putting them back into position I failed the first time as you saw there and then we got it in the end so we're pulling everything around again making everything look nice and flat and then finishing off by joining it up to the main path. Now what we want to do is try and make a nice kind of open building but we want to give it some sort of edge shall we say to make it look really good. Um, I was running a little bit dry on inspiration because I'd been at this for quite some time and uh, it kind of looks a little bit basic but I thought that must be a way to actually really finish this off and make it look decent and I was looking for like certain ways to add little pops of colour because as you can see we've got issues where the uh, floor that we've put down is moving through and kind of causing a little bit of clipping with the wood pieces that we've got down so I just wanted to make sure that that wasn't a long term issue and we could make something of it so that it doesn't look like too much of a problem so next up it was to move in this sign so we wanted to make sure that it wasn't just floating so the idea was to create some sort of structure around the back of it to make sure that it looked like it was actually part of 
a solid piece and that just involved using some of the new world fence posts or supporting posts to attach the sign itself to the corrugated iron roof and it was just a case of making sure that the colours match so it looks like one piece and then sinking it into the back of the man and woman just a little bit. Again it's still looking a little bit unfinished and a bit basic so our next step was to create a advertising board at the very back and I'd thought about a number of different things. We'd played around with some of the animated um, video footage and a few different other things. I'd thought about using it to advertise specific shops and vendors in the zoo itself. None of it really seemed to stick. So what I eventually settled on was using it to advertise other habitats that are in other parts of the zoo. So we settled on our African lion and the saltwater crocodile, again as a means to drive people back to those areas of the zoo and provide a little bit of education on those animals as well I guess. And rather than having the animal names I wanted to frame out the like descriptions and stuff and just have these pictures of animals. Which I thought looked pretty cool. And the final thing was to once again grab some plaster pillars and move them into position to add a final bit of framework to the structure to give it a nice solid feel and also add some contrasting colour palettes to the actual build itself. You can already see that I've still got a lot of roof exposed but we are going to sort that out as the build progresses. There you go, we're putting in our corrugated iron roof and finishing everything off. Just going to push a few bits of terrain out of the way. I'm making life difficult for myself as usual by building when there's a roof already in place and we even have the terrain interfering with the build itself but it's not too much of an issue and I can forgive myself because of the way that I decided to build this anyway so it's not too much of an issue. Rather than using plaster I eventually settled on the opaque glass because I think it's got a really nice reflective surface and it actually helps bring a little bit more light into the interior of the building itself. Again I was trying to use plaster but wasn't going to work. So once again, using the opaque glass to just finish it off, add a little bit of a frontage to this build itself because we don't actually need to see what's above there and at the back of the room. So the last thing to do was bring some of these plaster pillars forward and we were done and happy just about. Final finishing touch. I made a little planter there. I tried to fill it with water, it didn't quite work. And then we're just grabbing some wood logs here sinking them down to make this tiny little fence post and then using some of the mesh just to carry on around and make a lovely fence that just runs all the way around the end of this path here and that just carried on all the way along copy paste the usual stuff that i've been doing that you'll see copy paste tiny little adjustments just to keep it in line with the path itself and then making some additional little pieces here just to finish off that and bring it in line with this new planner that I've built here. I may make a few adjustments to that because I don't it didn't quite turn out how I how I wanted it to, which is why I've not actually shown you me building it. It was a really frustrating part of the build <laughs> to be honest. And then again bringing our fence around, making a nice long post and then I wanted to match the smaller post that I had which is why I pulled that across a little bit further just to finish it off get everything nice and lined up and rotated into position properly. This final one needs a little bit more of a rotation and again a little stubby end to this one bringing everything into position making sure that we have nice uniform pieces going all the way around and this is the finished article. So we had all of these pieces going around we've just left this pretty bare for now and I am going to do a little bit of off-camera work to redevelop this area so the next time you see this we will have a lovely new kind of like finished off path going all the way around. We've left this guest area here completely untouched because that's going to form the part of our next phase of development including this area here because I kind of want to integrate the station and this kind of new viewing area into one nice little piece. The problem that I have to confess, I was going to show you the process of me building this bridge and I have deleted the footage by complete accident. I was doing a clear out, I forgot I'd recorded the footage for this a long time ago and deleted the original source file and I have no way of getting it back unfortunately but I'm going to do my best to explain. So these pieces here 
Uh, I'm just going to uh, dismiss some of these <laughs> alerts. Please excuse my poor management of the zoo. <laughs> oh, there's some dangerous fighting for Alpha. I'm going to sort that as well. Right, we'll just pause things again now that we don't have that. So these are the waterfall cliff formations. We basically ran all of these across and framed them real nice with some little rocks and cladding pillars. Put in some elephant grass that's actually sunk way down into the uh, the waterfall itself. You can see right here. Got some rocks, brought them up in line, and then the bridge itself is a construction. Uh, we basically we tidied up the path a bit and made it a nice right angle. Then we used these plaster segments to add some support all the way along like a nice plaster wall and again these are the mesh fences we have used these quite a bit throughout the zoo some nice big planet zoo logs the eight meter tall one and they are there's actually two of these uh, some of them go a little bit further down uh, under the water i don't know if you'll be able to see yet yeah, right there at the underneath the water and they carry on all the way up uh, these ones are actually arctic wood panels that have been rotated into position because you can see there's a little bit of a uh, unevenness with the roof it was very very difficult to get this right to be quite honest and uh, i had a real tough time with it but looking all the way through here you've got this nice big pillars in the middle some indian uh, North African, sorry, wall lights. They don't have power at the moment. I need to sort that out. And then these bead shapes to make little bases for the pillars. Uh, you can see here that somebody has clipped right through the fence itself. Uh, they're looking down over here at the African buffalo that are grazing. And then we made some nice little trims using these decorative strips running all the way along. I just think it's a really nice looking bridge and it adds a little bit more character to it. Obviously, people will just walk through the pillars. We know what they're like for ignoring uh, the laws of physics as they move through. It took a while to build this, uh, but I'm really quite pleased with, with the outcome. We had a couple of dyed plaster segments right here and it looks great. It looks great. It just adds a nice touch to that side of the habitat and we actually end up tidying up the waterfall really nicely with it and uh, yeah really happy with that we do need to put a few special effects in here just to make sure that there's no issues and we're going to do a quick tour of everything that we've built let's just have a quick look so we're just going to speed all the way through this is all going to be sorted out at another episode as i've already said we have our nice toilets here they're lit up they're very bra they're very basic, very basic, I should say, but they're well illuminated. There's a nice bark chipping floor as you walk through there now. This planter here where I had a little bit of difficulty trying to make it filled with water. Um, basically what happened was the uh, water tool kept conforming to the mountain itself rather than the barrier that I built in. Maybe the barrier I'd put in was too small. Up here we have our staff area again, nicely illuminated. Could do with a little bit more in terms of lighting but it sits in very nicely and then through here ooh, I've not actually seen it at night time yet oh that looks great look at that fantastic let's just get a get a better angle at this there we go we've got no animals sleeping here I don't know why he's so excited but yeah so there's a little bit of an eerie red glow coming from those torches but we'll uh, we'll accept that it's uh, it's certainly atmospheric <laughs> Uh, there's still a litter issue here, but uh, we will have some handy men coming around to clean all of that up. Uh, but I do like that. That looks really nice at night time. Really well finished off, and I'm very pleased with that. But people are reading the education boards here. It's just a shame that... Oh, we do have animals in here. There's some warthogs sleeping in here. They're just not very... Oh, it's not a warthog. That's a very big warthog, Lee. Jesus Christ. Right. <laughs> so, moving on through again. This whole area is now complete. Nobody's stopping to look at animals because they can't see over the barrier. It's very well like finished off. I do want to run some plants all the way up here. Again, I'm going to do that in my off-camera session and maybe we'll put in a few custom signs and stuff. Other than that, that's pretty much all we've done today. It feels like we've done a lot more than that, but I think it's just because it's taken a long time to get everything finished off. Next episode, there's a couple of things I may do. We want to put something here. And whence, 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 from whence we came. 
Once we finish this off, actually, this whole zoo entrance and the initial few habitats, we want to get this area redeveloped and this one finished off. We put our pygmy hippo back in there. That'll be finished. This entire entrance area will be complete. So what I'm going to do off camera, just to let you guys know and give you a bit of advanced warning, I'm going to redevelop the African lion habitat. Again, I'm not going to show that. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to sort out this area here. I'm going to sort out this area here, put in some finishing touches there. I'm going to beautify this little area here, make sure that everything's looking nice and uniform. We're going to put a load more trees in just to kind of finish off this area. And then my next two episodes are going to be focused on developing this area here and this area here. Now, you don't see a lot because it's pretty dark, but again, that's what's going to happen. We're going to finish off framing this entrance, basically, and making sure that everything is tidied up and there's no real imperfections. That is a huge amount of crowd coverage there <laughs> as people come into the zoo. And then, uh, yeah, that'll be, that'll be it. Uh, we could do with finding a way to drive more people into the lion enclosure. But I don't know if that's just because there's a, a great big build-up of traffic here and then it thins out as you get around. But we'll see how that goes. Maybe we'll run an advertising campaign to try and bring people in. But we do have a, a fair number of queues now building up for the train. Maybe worth putting a second train in place. But I hope that was a, an enjoyable episode. I know it was a little bit bitty in parts and I'm trying to work out a new format and things. We'll see how that goes. I may just stick with speed builds and chatting rather than slowing things down because I find when you slow things down and do things a bit slower, it seems to take a lot of time to actually show some sort of development with a build. I've talked enough for today, so thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.